Hello friends, welcome to Miller's Laboratory. My name is Sue and today I'm going to be flipping through a new journal that I just finished. I am listing this for sale in my Etsy shop too, so if you like the looks of it, you can go to the link below and that will take you to my shop. I appreciate you coming to follow along today. Um, this book that I've created is um, a big one. It has, if you count front and back, it has almost 300 pages. Um, it became a little bit of a monster, um, but I love it very much. And the theme is pretty much red, um, and I was inspired by the cover. This book is called A Little Girl in Old Boston, and I just loved this pretty picture of the little girl in the bonnet. And so I've got a little belt holding this book closed and it's just a little belt that I made with a couple of D-rings. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take it off. Um, these fasten really easily. I haven't used one in a while but I really like them because you can cinch them down about as tight as you want and keep your book nice and closed really firmly. Um, so I used a piece of fabric that was not old um, but it was very white on the back side and I didn't like that. I wanted to kind of capture more of the gold that you see in the cover. So I just put this in a coffee um, dye, but I added a little bit of turmeric to it also so you can see the yellow and I was really happy with how that turned out. On one of the D-rings I've just added a few little buttons and charms too to hang down. Um, I have a lot of antique buttons and I like to share those with you. So I'm going to go ahead and set that belt aside. I want to show you the spine here. This is just um, some upholstery fabric that I found that I really liked the color and pattern of because it went with the cover. And then you can see that there are five signatures and I've stitched those in with black waxed thread here. So. While I flip through this book, because it's so long, I'm going to be telling you a story, too. If you don't want to hear the story, you can just turn off the sound. Um, so I'm going to open this up. And on the inside, I've used the original end paper. I've just kept that. You can see the original owner's name, which is Lizzie Nordstrom. I like to keep that if I can. And then I've added a book plate here. This is from the Graphics Fairy um, Premium Membership site. They have some wonderful graphics there, and I'm going to be talking more about that in a, in a little, little minute here. Um, and then the inside of the spine, I just reinforced with some white cotton fabric. So um, everything is nice and strong. I also will try to list the places where I purchased most of these digitals. I don't usually do that because I go I use so many different things in each book, but I did limit myself a little bit more with this one, so I will try to give you the information below. Um, I love this pretty red collage background paper. You'll see several of these throughout the book. And I've used a lot of these cute little images of cabinet cards, girls and, and, um, and women that have red. So I was sticking to that red theme here. This I think is an original book page and I do have a few of those in here. So June 25th was uh, the deadline for registering to um, be a candidate for the Graphics Fairy Design Team for next year. And I had seen that call and I was interested in that. I've never been on a design team before, but I thought that it might be a good fit for me. Um, I really like their images. And um, so I mulled that over for quite a while. And the night before, so June 25th was a Tuesday, I believe. The night before I decided to do it. And I wound up staying up very late getting together all of the um, the images that they wanted to see. Um, you know, they wanted to look at my social media and I had to do a little bit of writing. And so I was up very late getting all of that ready and pulling things off of my computer. And I went to bed and was woken up in the morning just before 6 a.m. 
this very freakish storm came through our town. I live in Whitehall, Michigan, which is in Muskegon County, and it's a really small town. Um, we had this storm that was straight line winds. They believe that they reached about 100 miles per hour, and the storm came through my neighborhood and just blew down trees as it went. Um, and so we woke up in the morning because we heard a bang. We weren't sure if it was thunder or what, what was going on. But um, I went downstairs and looked out my back window and all I could see was a, a huge branch on my deck. Which isn't a great thing to happen, but... So I called out to my husband, it's just a big branch on the deck. And um, then my son came downstairs and said, there's a tree through my ceiling. Um, his bedroom is upstairs. And um, so in the meantime, I went to look out the front door and you could hardly open the front door because all you could see was just tree. It was like there was a tree enveloping our house. So um, we had two oak trees in our front yard that were probably about a hundred years old and those both were blown down. Um, there were also trees across the street that blew down into our yard and across the street and this happened all up the street and all in the surrounding neighborhood. Um, so we had many holes in our roof um, but thankfully they were contained to um, a smaller area, um, my son's bedroom, um, and then the second tree fell on his car, which he had had for three weeks. So it felt like the storm was really upset with him. <laughs> um, he really got the brunt of it, unfortunately. Um, and we were just faced with uh, a mess because there was just tree and brush and everything in our yard. Um, there was no way we could get out of our house. Uh, we could get out into the yard, but we couldn't get out of the driveway. Um, the road was totally impassable with trees. And um, there were many other houses that were impacted much more so than ours. Like there were many houses where the trees just came square down through the middle of the house. And um, Many, many houses have been condemned because they're, they're destroyed by the trees. So um, it was a really traumatic thing to happen. Um, we lost our power, obviously, and we lost our cable and our internet. Um, I do have some pop-ups here. I'm just going to stop talking for a second. I've probably already gone through one, but there are several in here. Um... And so I was thankful that I had uh, put my submission in the night before um, and not waited until the morning, which I had also considered doing because I would not have been able to get onto my computer and get the images um, to send them. So um, that morning we obviously did not go to work. Um, our whole area, our whole neighborhood was kind of just in shock. People were kind of out trying to walk around a little bit and look at what was going on and um, trying to help each other out. Nobody was hurt, which was really a miracle, really a blessing. Um, considering the time that it happened, pretty much everyone was still in their home. And um, so that's a really great thing that nobody was hurt. Um, and then our community just all, you know, pulled together. We had a whole uh, band of gentlemen who came down the street with chainsaws and started cutting those and moving them to the side so that at least the road was cleared down the center so that it was somewhat passable. And um, we had many relatives and friends that came to our house helping us to um, clear away as much of the brush as possible. After a few days, the city actually did come, and because our trees had been in the right-of-way, they actually took responsibility for our trees and paid for someone to come and remove them. Not everything is gone yet, but the bulk of the trees 
really sad because they were beautiful trees and it's beautiful wood. I don't know what happened to it, but you know, we were just not in a in a state where we could manage that very well. Like we weren't trying to find someone to buy the wood or anything like that. We just needed it out of our yard. We had someone come and remove all of the tree and branches from the roof and put some tarps up so that we were protected from the rain. Because in addition to the wind, it was also raining really hard and we had water come in through the second floor and drip through down into our dining room in the first floor. So the plaster there has kind of got to be redone. And um, but we're just we're just thankful that all the people that helped us, all of our friends, really worked hard. It was really hard work to get all of that cleaned up, and we've got as much of it cleaned up right now as we can. There are still some big pieces of wood that we would like someone to come and take if they wanted to split them up for firewood. They would be awesome. <laughs> um, there's still big stumps that um, you know are overturned right out by the road. They haven't taken care of those yet, but. So right now we're just waiting for the insurance company to come and um, we're, they've been here. I shouldn't say that. I don't, we're not waiting for them to come. We're waiting for them to turn in um, whatever it is they have to do, the estimate or whatever they approve for funding to do the repairs. We do already have a contractor, um, someone that we know and trust to um, take, manage all of the repairs for us. So, so all in all, um, we're... We're very lucky. Um, my son also uh, lost his car, obviously, and um, it was totaled out. Um, he's still waiting on what the settlement's going to be for that from the insurance. But we're hoping that they at least pay. Uh, they would pay him what he just paid for the car since it was so new to him. So, so it's disrupted our lives a little bit. Um, I was working on this book while all of this was going on, um, doing really a lot of really hard um, physical work, and it was hot, and this really took a lot out of me, so it was very therapeutic for me to come in in my quiet times and work on this book. And um, So this, is, as I said, is a huge book. It kind of grew into a, a, a big, thick thing since... Um, I would just sit and work on it in the evenings, and um, I didn't give you the dimensions. I'll do that after I get done flipping through here. Also, I made the journal cards very thin. They're only like two thicknesses of paper thick. Um, that's pretty much throughout the book here because the, um, the book was already so fat. I didn't want to add too much bulk to it. There's another pop out there. It's a pretty little um, graphics fairy printable little envelope. I printed a different pattern on the inside and um, I just chose to leave it open so that you can open it up and journal inside but you could tuck something in there too if you wanted to. So the other great bit of the whole story is that after a few days I did get a notice from the graphics fairy that they had accepted me um, and so I am a member of their design team I'm really proud um, and humbled I guess but I'm really excited that they chose me and I'm really happy to work with them over the next year and if you follow me you will see my first project for them um, in September so I hope that you will watch and I hope you'll take a look at what they have because they have really wonderful images available. I'm going to just pop some pictures at the end too if you're interested. Um, one pop up there and one pop up there. I will just pop a few pictures of um, the house and, the, and what's going on with that so um, you can see. But it, it's okay. It's going to have a happy ending. Um, we're safe and we're going to get a new roof and so it'll all be okay. I hope everyone else is having a good summer. I know there have been some other 
bad um, weather events in other states. Um, a lot of people are really suffering from that, and I, I sympathize with that. Um, we're at the mercy of Mother Nature sometimes, and there's not a lot we can do about it. I just hope that everyone else finds the, the kindness that we did as we were um, dealing with the aftermath of that. I can't believe that it's already the middle of July. This flips out. Um, I feel like the summer is slipping by, as I always do. I um, feel like uh, I want to put the brakes on and put it in slow motion, because I feel like I'm not doing all of the things that I'd like to be doing outdoors. My husband and I like to kayak, and we haven't done that yet. Um, um, we like to go hiking haven't really done much of that yet so hoping that um, the rest of the summer things will calm down a little bit and we can do some enjoyable things and um, really enjoy summer in Michigan because it's lovely it's a lovely lovely season for us I used old pages in here. I used um, beautiful, beautiful um, graphics. These are um, chapter one papers, I believe, but I will put all of that below again so that in case you're interested, you can, you can find them yourself. This is another pop-up here. Lots of red birds, red flowers, red background papers. And that brings us to the end. So thank you for joining me. Um, oh, let me, I was going to give you the dimensions. The book is about seven and three quarters inches high, uh, five and a quarter inches wide. And when the little belt is on it and holding it closed, one and three quarters inches thick. So once again, thank you for joining me. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I will see you soon. Bye.